Hello, this is Matthew Quattararo again, uh, and for my third video, I'll start off by admitting that I done goofed. Uh, in my last video, I promised I would show you how to use the symmetric constraint, and I didn't. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and teach you how to use that. Uh, in addition to teaching you how to modify things that uh, you've already created, um, just as we want to do here, there's something that we need uh, to fix, and we have to go back to do that. And we're going to do that by taking a look at the model tree over here. So you'll see one more thing that, that's been added, and that's this extrude number one. Uh, that's the default name uh, that it came up with for the extrusion that we put in. Any other features that we have will be inserted here. Surprise, surprise. And those will be maybe more extrusions, maybe uh, a rounding into corner, or we shell the body, uh, something crazier like that. But we're, we're not going to worry about these crazy tools we're just gonna modify this one so how do we do that we're gonna drop this down uh, by clicking the arrow we're gonna take a look at our uh, two-dimensional sketch that was created you can see how the extrude uh, ate it for lack of a better word it's uh, been subsumed into the extrude we're gonna right click on that and we're gonna click edit definition and here we are we're back in our sketching environment so we'll snap right to that plane. I'm going to go ahead and delete this length constraint right here. And you can see now how uh, this can get a little nuts now. I'm actually going to go ahead and delete this as well, just to make things a little easier on us. So what are we going to do? First, we select the symmetric constraint. You can see our tools selected. And the first thing we select is our center line that we made. That's why we made it in the first place, after all. And then we select two vertices. One, two. You can see the little arrow. They've been snapped together. Press escape to leave the tool. And they're not going anywhere. They remain uh, symmetric across this line. And actually, if we were to unlock this dimension so that we could move it around, you could see that they still remain symmetric. So why don't we go ahead and fix that. We'll lock these dimensions again. We'll click OK. And we're back out. Now, what exactly are we going to be doing this time? Um, we're going to make these holes right here and you can see that their dimensions aren't clearly filled in so once again we'll make them up knowing that we now know how to go back and change them if we need to so why don't we create a sketch and we'll create it on this surface rather than on any of the datum planes we've selected our plane we can click sketch there we go we'll flip to the sketch view I know it looks the same as before, but it's actually not. <laughs> We're now sketching uh, on top of this on this body that we've created here, and you can see that we have a new sketch, uh, totally separate from the one that we made within this tree. So what exactly do we need? We can see that we have uh, six holes on each side in pairs of two. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and start making some circles some circles. You can see this little R has just appeared. That's the equal radius constraint. As I'm creating these uh, this geometry, Creo will guess what I want to do uh, with that geometry. So unless I'm wildly off like this, uh, it will assume that I want to um, have these circles to be at the same radius. If I push escape, and I modify this dimension to be something a little larger, you can see they both resized because that constraint was automatically put in. So keep that in mind when you're creating dimensions. So let's create more circles. What have we? I'm going to select the equal tool. I click on one. You can see that these two were equal radius to each other. 
Uh, so now that I made these two equal radius to each other, uh, this one kind of just followed suit. Uh, this one's already an equal radius, so I'll just click on the last one. And I'll click Escape twice to leave the tool. Once to leave our selection, once to leave the tool entirely. And now I'll switch to something more like the vertical tool. And we'll vertically constrain these to each other. You can see the little tabs there showing that these two are already vertically constrained as are these. Push escape. Let's do the horizontal ones now. I'm sure this is much too big. Let's change this to something more along the lines of, I don't know, 1 eighth. Let's put in 1 divided by 8. You can see that Creo automatically understands this. Now, it's only showing two dimensions. We all know 1 eighth is 0.125. Uh, but if you double click on this, you can see that it is, in fact, 0.125. So don't let the, uh, the precision that it's... Now, I don't want to leave the sketch. Don't let the precision that it's displaying actually fool you. Uh, and that can be changed, but uh, that's, a, that's a topic for another time. So, I don't really want to create all those again. That was kind of a hassle. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use the mirror command. Uh, and I'm going to start by creating a center line. Just like we did before. This is a little trickier, though. It's not letting us snap to this midpoint, because the midpoints technically were not there. Remember that line was in the other sketch. So I'm just going to arbitrarily define this. Oh, excuse me. And I'm going to put in a dimension. Now, normally this isn't such a great idea, because if the size of this piece changes, then the position, uh, the, mid, the middle of this piece, is also going to change. So it's customary to do things a little differently, but I'm going to show you this uh, tool so that I can show how a dimension is actually inserted, because you can see that the dimension they gave us is not so good. We don't, we don't really like uh, how this is defined. So here's what we're going to do. We push the normal dimension. We're going to click on our center line. I'm going to click on our axis. And then we're going to push the middle mouse button. We're going to press the wheel down. Pop! And we have a dimension of our own. And it replaces this weak dimension up here that it automatically generated. Uh, so this is a 12 inch long piece. We put in 6 inches. It's exactly equal. And we'll lock that. Yuck. Getting cranky. Again, this is not the smartest way to define this line, but it serves the purpose for showing how to create a dimension. And now we're going to use the mirror tool, which is somewhere up here. Ah. So, first we're going to have to select these entities. Now, it's a little tricky to select these entities right off the bat because you can see we're also selecting these uh, dimensions. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to use a geometric filter down here in the lower right-hand corner. Uh, this will allow us to only select geometry. Ta-da! Now we can push the mirror button. We'll select the line we're mirroring. And ta-da! All of our geometry has returned. Now, I strongly suggest immediately going back and changing your filter, or you will definitely try to change things uh, that you're not going to be able to because of it. Uh, it's an easy thing to forget that you have uh, on. So let's go ahead and just start filling in some of these arbitrarily, knowing that we can go back and change them as needed. We're going to make a new dimension here. You can see that as we modify one side, the other side also changes. And we're going to go about like this. Now, 
Now, for the sake of pacing, I'm going to go ahead and pause the tutorial. I think you get the idea. We'll be back in just a moment. All right, and I'm back. Uh, so what you can see here is I threw in another center line uh, to find incorrectly again. Um, and I added some dimensions again arbitrarily because it's a practice part knowing that we can change it as we need to uh, and I'm gonna click OK now what did I do what am I gonna do with this we're gonna use these holes uh, to punch through the extrusion that we made so what do we do we push on the extrude now we can select our sketch directly or we can select the sketch over here in the window I'm gonna push the sketch here and you can see what it really wants to do is send out all of our little holes off into space as a positive extrusion we're actually gonna go over here to options we're gonna select through all and we're gonna select remove material instead I'm going to click on the arrow so that it changes direction and you can see our preview here it's trying to punch a hole right through which is exactly what we want so we're going to click the OK arrow and we've made our little holes and now our part is done make sure to save it I'm just going to save it to the desktop because why not very good in our next video we'll uh, take a look at using assemblies to put this together with the Tetrix pieces that PTC the creators of Creo have provided for us I'll show you that in just a second see you then